We'll now move on to setting up the sales and the sales area. If I click on sales, it will take me as usual to a welcome to an easy sales setup assistant. And if I click next, it then asks me what will be my normal default sales layout. NYOB uses five basic sales layouts. A service, where I'm selling services only. An item, say where I'm selling goods out of stock, out of stores. A professional, where I can put in the date I carried out the service, and maybe multiple dates if I'm, say, doing a number of uh, items throughout a month and I just want to send a bill at the end of the month. Time billing, if I was a lawyer or accountant, I would have people working for me on a time charge basis and this would allow me to collate all those times, generate an invoice and send them out. And I also have a miscellaneous. A miscellaneous sales invoice I cannot print. The reason for that, it just doesn't allow me, but it does allow me to make adjustments to an account for my own purposes. Depending on what is the major area, I would select one of those. But if, for example, I was doing a fair bit of repair work and maybe selling parts, then maybe I would choose no default. For the first part, I will just select service. Click next. We'll move on to where we need to decide upon our selling details. I may decide to split my income streams into the various types of work that I do and have one predominant one. I could then set that as a default income account. I can also go in and set this income account later. For the time being, I will let it leave it as a blank and then run it in later when I've decided. With my credit limits, NYB allows me to set up a generic credit limit for everybody. It will also allow me to set up various individual credit limits. For example, if I'm dealing with the government, they're notoriously slow at paying their bills. So if I decide that no more credit after 30 days, it may be that if I've got a customer that is a government department, I may not always get paid within that 30 days. Their systems may not allow for prompt payment. In which case, I might, at that particular customer, gives them a few more days to pay. It may be that I want to have a special on a particular item that if paid, say, within seven days, you'll get a very special price. Or it may be even a cash on delivery sale. Uh, I can actually do it at the item level if I decide later. For the time being, I'm going to set up a credit limit that is zero and we'll work it out as we go on what exactly we want to do. If I click next, it will ask me what is the general tax code for my customers. Most of the time, they will be GST. I'm assuming that the company we're setting up is going to have a turnover limit higher than that, which is exempt from GST. I'll also be charging my customers for freight, and if I do, then maybe I will have to have a GST code on my freight. Depending upon your sort of business, you may need professional advice about which tax codes you want to use. If I click next, it will then let me set up the payment information. How do my customers normally pay? Are they paying by check? Do they pay cash? Do they pay, for example, by bank card or by diners club? Or is it an FPOS system? As we go through with our business, we'll get the most common one. When is my payment due, my credit terms for my customers? Are they on a particular day of the month after the end of month? Or is it a prepaid or in a given number of days? Depending upon my business, I will need to decide what exactly I want to have as my credit terms. And if I uh, decide in a given number of days... I can also determine when my balance due days are. In this particular case, I'll make it 30. Do I give a discount for early payment? I may want to give a 7% a 7 day and say a 2% discount. So my discount days will be 7. My discount for an early payment will be a 2% discount. And my monthly charge for a late payment that I will leave at your discretion. Click 
next and it will take us on to asking where do I normally bank my customer receipts? Most people will normally pay directly to my bank account, in which case that would be the cheque account, that would be a fine default. But if most of my payments maybe get in cash or cheque and I have a lot of payments to collect, then maybe I want to put it with undeposited funds, in which case I will change that to an 11, 1, 11, 80, my undeposited funds account and use that. I can then clear that out once or twice a week and take the cheques down to the bank and put them into my account that way. I much prefer FPOS, direct payment to my account. The default account for undeposited funds is 11180. Click Next and it will ask me to build my customers list. If I have a list of customers, I may want to import them. I can do that electronically to save me retyping. And I will go through later on exactly how we import lists such as customers or items or suppliers. If I click Next, it will ask me then to enter any historical sales I have. We're starting up a business without those historical sales, we'll just click Next. But if I have got some open, then by all means I can bring them in at that stage. Now I've finished setting up my sales easy setup assistant. I'll close that and we can then move on to purchases.